I begin, I wanted to introduce you to Clutebox, who kindly sponsored today's video. Clutebox is a K-pop subscription box which contains a variety of Korean snacks and merchandise from your favorite K-pop groups. Every single box is different, so you don't know what you're gonna get, and it's basically kind of like a surprise. So I've actually got my very own Clute box here, which I haven't opened yet, so let's go and open that now. I'm so excited. <gasps> wow, there's so much stuff. Wow! Oh my gosh, this is so cute. You know, this is like my favorite Korean candy. <laughs> Not only do you get to pick your favorite K-pop group, you also get to pick your bias. So what are you waiting for? I'll leave the link to Clute Box in the description down below and don't forget to use code PLUFY678 for 5% off. So I'm sure most of you have heard of Black Swan. They debuted under DR Music in 2020 with the song Tonight and they're well known for having a black member who's from Senegal called Fato. On the surface, Black Swan seems like a pretty normal rookie K-pop group with a nice music video and a catchy song. But did you know that behind this new and seemingly typical K-pop group lies a long and turbulent history of almost a decade? So for those of you guys who do not know, before Black Swan, there was actually Rania and BP Rania. So Rania was the original group that debuted in 2011 before rebranding several times, first into BP Rania in 2017, before finally becoming Black Swan in 2020. Many of you have probably heard of Alex, the first black K-pop idol. And while she was actually a part of Rania, Black Swan's predecessor group, but aside from that, there have also been a lot of less fortunate events that have happened to this group throughout the years. From having the most member changes in K-pop history, to sassing fans, to member pregnancies, literally anything that could happen to a K-pop group has happened to Rania. Which is why it has taken me over 2 months of intense research, 28 pages of notes, and hours of meetings to finally come back with this long-awaited, highly requested video about Rania slash BP Rania slash Black Swan. Before we jump in, I wanted to let you guys know that due to the sheer volume of information, I've decided to split this video up into two parts. So this is obviously part one, and part two will be uploaded next week. There have also been a lot of fake news articles posted online, presumably by the Sasing fans, which is why I decided to reach out to former members of Rania to find out more. So huge thanks to Yina. 안녕하세요. 저는 Rania 원년 멤버로 활동을 했던 샘이고 그리고 중국에서 이나로 활동을 했던 어, 황샘이라고 합니다. 반갑습니다. And Namphon. Hi! My name is Namphon or Cora or Pony. You can call me anything. I'm a former member of Rania. I'll be including clips from our interviews here and there to support my points in this video. But if you'd like to see the full interviews, then head on over to my Patreon. Guys, I honestly try my best to verify all my sources, but with a timeline as messy and convoluted as Rania's, there's really no guarantee that all the information I found was 100% accurate. So just keep in mind that everything in this video is alleged. And with all that out of the way, grab yourself a snack because this is going to be a long video. So let's start from the beginning before Rania even debuted. Selection for Rania was apparently very competitive, with over 3,000 people auditioning in Thailand alone. After a series of intense auditions, 40 people were selected by DR Music to train and compete for spots in Rania. In the end, 8 members were selected. Yina, Jui, Rico, Joy, D, Tia, Xia, and Sarah. The group engaged in several pre-debut activities, with three of the members starring alongside Jay Park in the movie Hype Nation. And the group was also featured in several advertisements and did some pre-debut performances. On the surface, with so many pre-debut activities and schedules, things seem to be going great for Rania. However, behind the scenes, it turns out member changes were already happening. Sarah left the group just months before the scheduled debut to go back to China and, of all things, open the first Hello Kitty restaurant in Beijing. CEO of the restaurant, Sarah Wong, is a 24-year-old actor and singer who says she's a loyal fan of the cast. So that left Rania with seven members. 
On the 6th of April 2011, the remaining seven members of Rania made their debut with the title track Dr. Feel Good. According to DR Music, this song was meant to be for Lady Gaga and was composed by famous American producer Teddy Riley. Uh, a fact that was pretty aggressively marketed to the public. I mean, they literally called their entire album Teddy Riley The First Expansion. The music video also featured the members in scantily clad outfits doing a risque concept and choreography. And with all of these factors combined, it was no surprise that this debut attracted a ton of attention and controversy. But while everyone was freaking out about these seven girls, unbeknownst to the public, Rania was actually an eight-member girl group. Nani? That's right guys, Rania in fact consisted of one additional member called Yijo, who was actually in the music video all along, although she only appeared for a split second and did not participate in any of the choreography. Pretty reminiscent of another future member if you ask me. A full five days after the group's debut, DR Music finally acknowledged Yijo's existence, admitting that she had in fact been a quote, last minute addition. Turns out, after Sarah left the group, DR Music attempted to replace her with Thai trainee Data. However, Data left due to homesickness, so next in line was Canadian trainee Minhee, who also left the group due to parental disapproval. Eventually, Yijo, a Chinese trainee, was the only trainee left, so she automatically replaced Sarah. Up until today, there's still some confusion as to whether Yijo was ever an official member of the group, because according to Yina, But if Yijo was never an official member, then why was she in the music video? Well, that kind of remains a mystery up till today. But it doesn't matter anyways because Yijo never ended up performing with Rania. Apparently, this elusive member was experiencing visa issues. And before we knew it, just as mysteriously as she had joined Rania, she left the group that same month. According to Yina, Yijo now runs a successful cosmetic business in China. Despite the rocky beginnings, in June of 2011, Rania was set to make their first comeback with the song Masquerade, which was yet another track produced by Teddy Riley. Additionally, DR Music announced that the group would be making an American debut. And with famous producer Teddy Riley by their side, surely nothing would go wrong, right? Well, not really, because Teddy Riley was actually getting pretty annoyed with DR Music. This track was composed by Teddy Riley. Our album is another track produced by Teddy Riley. Oh my god, producer Teddy Riley. It was all too much for Teddy Riley, who was getting sick of DR Music's constant attempts to basically use him for clout. According to Teddy's representative, DR Music had been aggressively using Teddy's name and reputation for their marketing purposes without his consent. And despite marketing Rania as being quote, Teddy's group, they did not actually give Teddy any creative control as promised. And on top of all of that, they underpaid him too. All this culminated in an explosive Twitter rant, whereby Teddy claimed that Rania would be better off in an entertainment company like SM Entertainment and accused Rania's managers of doing quote, shady business. After this falling out, Teddy Riley cut all ties with Rania and DR Music. And so needless to say, Rania's American debut never ended up happening. With no more Teddy Riley to fall back on, DR Music had to find new composers, which is why in November of 2011, Rania returned with Pop Pop Pop, a song that was produced by Brave Brothers. 
Unfortunately, just shortly after the song's release, Thailand was struck with a series of floods. And so Thai member Joy went on hiatus so that she could spend time with her family back in Thailand. According to DR Music, Joy was still very much a part of Rania and would be returning soon. However, Joy herself said in a tweet that she had in fact left the entertainment industry. The most puzzling thing about this is that not only did Joy never rejoin Rania, she also didn't leave the entertainment industry because just one year later she re-debuted as part of a Thai pop group called Gaia. Meanwhile, another member Ju Yi also mysteriously disappeared from all promotions, which really worried fans. It wasn't until fans started bombarding DR Music with questions that they finally responded by saying that Juhi was on hiatus. With another two members gone, Rania had essentially been reduced from an eight-member group to a five-member group within just the span of a year. In September of 2012, the remaining five members came back with the track Style. In March of 2013, Rania released their next song, Just Go. This time, Rania remained a five-member group with no member change. Wait a minute, this member looks kind of different. As soon as the music video was released, fans realized that one of the members, Rico, did not look like Rico. She looked more like Jui, the member that's on hiatus. Puzzled, fans began asking DR Music for answers. And it wasn't until these questions flooded the comments section that DR Music finally released a statement confirming that Julie had indeed replaced Rico for this comeback. However, they reassured fans saying that Rico was just on hiatus to focus on her studies and will be back for Rania's next song. Later that year, DR Music announced that Rania would be attempting to debut in America for the second time. But this time, this debut was hyped up to be of epic proportions. Empire Records was going to be handling the girls' distribution. Two of Britney Spears' managers were going to be Rania's managers in the US. Not sure that was a good thing. The debut album was going to feature collaborations with Snoop Dogg and 2 Chainz. Rania was even supposed to begin filming a reality TV show with MTV to document their preparations and their debut process. You would think that with such an epic debut coming up and with so many preparations in place, surely the members themselves would know about this American debut, right? 2013년도요? 네. 그거는 기억이 안 나는데 저희가 미국에 데뷔할 저가 있었나요? 제가 있었던 시, 시기인가요? 네, 네. 예, 있었어요? 네. <웃음> Well, as you might have guessed, Rania's American debut did not happen once again. Nobody knows why debut plans fell through because DR Music as usual failed to update the fans. And so instead of an epic American debut as promised, fans had to settle for a digital single titled Up, which was released in July. <laughs> In May of 2014, Rania signed with Spanish label Ingenio Media. DR Music confirmed that the group's next comeback, titled Acceleration, would be produced by their new Spanish label. Fans were excited for this comeback. They were also excited to finally see Rico again, since she was supposed to be back for this promotion cycle. Which made it all the more shocking when just two days later, they woke up to this post by Ingenio Media, who suddenly announced that they were looking for a sixth member to replace Rico. Confused, fans began contacting DR Music to confirm the news. And after a few hours, Ingenio Media retracted their statements, saying that they were not looking for members to replace Rico, and that any news regarding member changes would have to come directly from Rania's company, DR Music. So what was DR Music saying? Well, nothing. They remained silent on the issue, leaving Rico's fans unsure about her status in the group. It wasn't until a few months later that DR Music finally released a statement confirming that Rico had in fact left the group to focus on university. During this time, Yina also suddenly stopped attending all schedules and deactivated her social media accounts. Once again, DR Music did not release any official statement, leaving fans in the dark. But today, Yina herself is finally here to tell us the highly sensitive, top secret reason why she wasn't promoting with Rania during this time. Drum roll, please. Oh, 
하에 말을 하고 어, 어, 이제 동의 하에 활동을 못 하겠다 라고 해서 팀을 나가게 됐었고 Why couldn't DR Music just tell fans that? Well, we will never know. In August, fans were in for another shock where they saw Rania perform not as a group of four, but as a group of five. Could Rico have returned? Could Nina have geeseed back in? Could Joy have rejoined? Nope, it was a completely new girl. Turns out DR Music had added a new member to the group, hoping nobody would notice. But newsflash, fans have eyes. It didn't take long for fans to detect a change in the lineup, but with no official member introduction, fans had no choice but to refer to her as the new member. To wrap up this absolutely chaotic year, member Juyi also vanished, with yet another unannounced member taking her place. Thankfully, this time, fans quickly identified her as Hyeme, a DR Music trainee. In January of 2015, two months after her last appearance, DR Music finally realized that fans could, in fact, tell that the new member wasn't Juyi. Unable to hide Juyi's disappearance any longer, the company finally announced that Juyi was on hiatus. Shortly thereafter in April, the new member also left the group. Sadly, throughout her time in Rania, she had never been officially introduced and not many people even knew who she was. But it is completely thanks to fans that today, we can finally put a name to her face, Sharon Park. By July, another new member, Soji, had joined the group. At this point, things had gotten so bad that most fans simply could not keep track of Rania's ever-changing lineup. And on top of all of this chaos, Rania's comeback song, Acceleration, which was supposed to be released in July, had already been postponed several times when in August, it was suddenly leaked. Ingenio Media blamed DR Music for this mishap, saying that they shouldn't have continuously delayed the comeback in the first place. And so, this comeback was just dropped altogether. But how was this song leaked? Well, theories vary, but all of them revolve around a notorious Sasing fan who we will refer to as C. Some believe that C hacked into Ingenio Media's catalog, while others believe it was an inside job and one of the staff sent the song to C. Regardless, C is widely believed to be the culprit. So where did C come from? Well, fans speculate that C was in fact a scorned lover, stuck in an unrequited love with the CEO of DR Music, and after getting rejected, vowed to take revenge on the CEO by destroying Rania. Like, guys, I can't even make this shit up. And Rania wasn't even the only group she supposedly terrorized. Some of you guys may know Henry Prince Mack, a YouTuber and member of JJCC, who was allegedly a victim of C as well. But hey, we're here to talk about Rania, and as for C, well, this wouldn't be the last time they heard of her as she continued to lurk in the background. So trust me when I say you'll see her again. Okay, so at this point, it's 2015, and due to all of the chaos, it may have slipped your mind that it has in fact been over two years since Rania's last comeback. So DR Music finally announced that Rania would be making your next comeback on the 6th of November 2015 with the track Demonstrate, which would feature African-American rapper Alexandra Reed. Now keep the date 6th of November in mind, because on November 4th, just two days before the comeback, DR Music suddenly broke their silence, releasing a barrage of information on their fans. Nina, last seen a year and a half ago, had left. Julie, last seen a year ago, had left. And featured artist Alexandra Reed, well, she was now an official member. I mean, imagine learning about three lineup changes just two days before their comeback. It's obviously very overwhelming, and similarly, it was all too much for Rania's fans to handle. However, the buzz around Rania was also starting to build. As the first African-American idol, Alex obviously garnered a lot of interest. Many people couldn't believe that there was finally going to be a mainstream black K-pop idol, and so interest in Rania started to increase over the next two days. And then, the day of the comeback arrived. On November 6th, Rania finally released their long-awaited song, Monstrate? Oh, I think they mean Demonstrate. Many people tuned in, excited to see Alex in the music video. Oh wait, she wasn't. 
or, or the performances? Oh wait, she wasn't in the choreography either. While Alex was marketed as a member of the group, she was never actually treated as an actual part of the group. She wore different outfits, never participated in the choreography, and was usually only on stage for the brief time that she rapped before disappearing off stage again, much like a featured artist would. And this would continue for the rest of Alex's career with Rania. I was looking at your performances and I had a question. Why were you always just at your parts but didn't go through the whole choreography? Okay, that's, yeah, that's the million dollar question because mm -hmm. I can't honestly say I know 100%. Oh, wow. I was in the dark. I would be in America and asking when I'm coming back and then when I would come back, it would be like late and then they'd be like, it's too late, we can't fit you. And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, then why was I here? Like, yeah. what, what was I doing? Like, besides freaking out and panicking and wondering when I was allowed to come back. Like, in fact, the group was renamed Rania 5 despite having six members. <laughs> But in spite of everything, Demonstrate had become one of Rania's most popular songs, ranking at number 25 on the charts. The new song, coupled with the addition of Alex to the group, had seemingly revitalized Rania's fanbase and brought in a wave of new fans, who showed their support to Rania by donating to their fundraiser campaign for their next comeback Demonstrate? Wait, what? So for those of you who may not be familiar with Megstar, it is basically a crowdfunding platform that many K-pop groups use to raise funds for upcoming projects. The problem was that in Rania's case, this campaign was to raise funds not for the next comeback, but for this comeback, the one they just released. So how did this happen? Well, let's backtrack to the 3rd of November, just three days before Demonstrate was set to be released because that was the day that DR Music started this Megstar campaign to raise funds for Demonstrate. Now tell me how that works because I'm pretty sure it takes more than 3 days to film a music video or to produce a song. So where are these funds going to? And worse yet, the campaign was still open and accepting donations almost 2 months after the song's release. The campaign was finally closed at the end of December after a slew of complaints from puzzled fans. This was far from the only Megstar controversy that DR Music was involved in though, because they then started another campaign to raise funds for an album that was going to be released in April of 2016. However, despite donations from fans, April came and went without any comeback or even any updates for that matter. Even the rewards that were promised to fans failed to arrive. It wasn't until May that DR Music finally sent out a letter informing fans that this album had been postponed to August of 2016 and that they were working on an Alex Hiamei subunit instead. They also promised fans that they will be receiving their missing rewards soon. And well, that was the last time Make Star donors would ever hear from DR Music because they just vanished after that. Weeks came and went and eventually Megstar themselves had to step in and attempt to contact DR Music, but their calls were, you guessed it, ignored. On July the 13th, 2016, Megstar released the following statement, which read in part, Despite making numerous requests to DR Music concerning information regarding the project process, Megstar has not received any further information. Due to the continued irresponsible behaviour and stance taken by the Rania project creator, Makestar has decided to refund all funds accrued through the project. Aside from Makestar, DR Music also had falling outs with this dance team, which they hired for one of Rania's TV shoots. The dance team accused DR Music of not paying them, and then, wait for it, ignoring their calls. Are you guys starting to see a pattern here? In response, DR Music issued the following statement where they denied the dance team's accusations. It is unknown if this issue was ever resolved. And then as if this couldn't get any messier, on top of all of this utter chaos, in May of 2016, the last original members, D, Tia, and Xia, also left the group. They attempted to re-debut as a new group called Elate, but plans fell through. So this left Soji, Hyame, and Alex, even though she was absent from most of their live performances, as the only remaining members of Rania. But then starting in June of 2016, a strange phenomena happened. Random people would be spotted performing with Rania at their live events. And as usual, there was no official statement by DR Music. Worse still, these unidentified people were switched in and out of every performance, resulting in a different lineup at every event. 
Understandably, fans were super confused. Some people speculated that these might be backup dancers, some thought that they were new members, and some thought they were guest performers. But basically, nobody knew who they were. So this actually went on for 4 months, from June to October. And it wasn't until October that DR Music finally explained what was going on. Turns out these unidentified people were all DR Music trainees, and DR Music was basically getting them to perform with Rania on stage to get more experience. And they were then going to pick a few of these trainees to become permanent members of Rania. In December, the new lineup was finally confirmed. Out of all of the mysterious trainees I was talking about earlier, Ji Yoon, Yumin, and Tabo were selected to become permanent members of the group. Additionally, Yina, who if you recall was last seen in 2014, unexpectedly rejoined. So this made Rania now a 7 member group. Alex was named as the new leader and the group was rebranded into BP Rania or Black Pearl Rania. And according to some sources, the word Black Pearl was added in reference to Alex's dark skin tone. Yikes. To wrap up the year, BP Rania then released the song Start a Fire. Despite now being the leader of the group, Alex was still excluded from the choreography. She did appear in a few scenes in the music video though, so it was a step up I guess. In February of 2017, BP Rania started promoting Make Me Up, a B-side track from the Start of Fire mini album. You make me and believe it or not, Alex was actually included in the choreography. Overall, Alex was just included in a lot more of BP Rania's activities and fans were delighted to see that she was finally being treated like an actual part of the group. Unfortunately though, this didn't really last long because less than a month later, DR Music announced that Alex had gone back to the US for a supposed acting role. Initially, fans praised DR Music for promptly putting out a statement for once. However, by the time April rolled around, Alex still hadn't rejoined the group and there were no updates. Additionally, fans also noticed that Yina had disappeared. After a bunch of questions from worried fans, DR Music finally responded by saying that Yina was on hiatus. However, Yina posted that she had in fact left the group for good this time. After um, Start a Fire, so you left again and this time you left permanently. So what prompted you to leave permanently? 어 동생들이랑 나이 차이가 조금 많이 나서 다더 저보다 많이 어려서 활동하면서는 그래도 큰 문제는 없었던 것 같아요. 그래도 근데 어, 원래 활동했던 멤버들이 그립기도 하고 그랬죠. 가수 생활, 팀 생활 하는 거에 대해서 그리고 많이 어, 지쳐가지고. And then in May, not even a month after Yina's last appearance, DR Music held auditions in New York to recruit even more new members for BP Rania. Fans who had just grown attached to BP Rania's new lineup were obviously livid. And then while all of these member changes were happening, Ingenio Media, the Spanish label who I thought had previously dropped Rania, so I'm actually kind of confused about this part, but yeah, they suddenly started promoting Rania Legends, an album which was supposed to contain Rania's full discography. According to Ingenio Media, all the money raised from this compilation album would then be used to fund BP Rania's next release. This album was available for pre-order for one month, from the beginning until the end of March, and was exclusively sold on Ingenio Media's website. However, there was a catch. At least 100 copies needed to be sold in order for the albums to get shipped out. Eager to support their favorite artists, Rania's fans enthusiastically bought and promoted the album, and they actually managed to reach 100 pre-orders. Excited, these fans waited and waited, but no album arrived. 
Instead, they received the following message in which the company claimed that all of these songs would instead be included in BP Rania's next album. Spoiler, it wasn't. In August, Rania dropped their next album, Refresh 7th, with the title track Beep Beep Beep. This comeback was noticeably of a much lower budget and quality than Rania's previous releases. And needless to say, it was not well received by the public. Oh, and remember the Alex Hieme subunit that was promised in the Make Star fundraiser from 2016? That DR Music finally sent out a letter informing fans that this album had been postponed to August of 2016 and that they were working on an Alex Hieme subunit instead. Well, it wasn't quite what donors were expecting. Instead of getting a full subunit debut as promised, fans had to settle for a B-side track on the Refresh 7th album called No Dab. Why they had to raise thousands of dollars for this, we will never know. And as if all of this wasn't disappointing enough, the worst part was that Alex was once again excluded from the choreography. And during the showcase, she was made to stand awkwardly at the side of the stage, which was no doubt a lonely and awkward experience. Although Alex had always been excluded from Rania's activities, it seemed like this was the straw that broke the camel's back. She had had enough of being treated like an outsider, and she had reached her breaking point. And so this time, she was finally going to stand up for herself and take some drastic action. So this is where I'm gonna end part 1, but if you think that the story has been crazy so far, which admittedly it has been like pretty crazy, then just wait till you see part 2 because the story gets even more insane. People think they can push you around, take advantage of you, manipulate you, dead wrong. You'll dead had in fact been two months pregnant by the time she left three unannounced members. Sassing them. She keeps sending me a texting and hack my Instagram, Gmail, hack everything I have. So don't forget to check back in in a week's time for part two. And if you're not already, then please consider subscribing and clicking on the notification button so that it'll remind you when my next video is up. And if you're interested in even more information about Rania or Black Swan, then please check out my Patreon. So I've actually got four bonus videos about Rania slash Black Swan, and I've uploaded two so far. Um, so the first one is the full interview that I did with Yina. <laughs> And the second one is this is like part of a meeting that I had with my friend slash editor Zina where we were discussing the research that we did about Sasang Si. And unfortunately we can't include all of it in this two-parter due to time constraints, but there's so much information. I mean that can be a video in and of itself and it's just it's really interesting guys. She She's an interesting character. Are all her presentations about Rani? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's she's just, It's just her talking about Tracking yeah. down music director you So this is the one where she posts his um his phone number to the internet She calls him, she messages him What the heck? Yeah, she has a Facebook um with the same name I was reading through that Facebook and like dude, she posts like a hundred times a day So this is, you know, her harassing their management, basically <laughs> What? There are more likes than dislikes? Dude, I'm kind of scared about covering this. I have to cover the sassing thing, right? In my video, obviously. Because everyone's gonna keep talking about yeah. the sassing. So I have to cover yeah. her. So I'm gonna use a VPN. And I've also got another two bonus videos on the way. So that will all be up by next week. So if that sounds interesting to you, then don't forget to check out my Patreon. Links will be in the description down below. Lastly, huge thanks once again to Clutebox for sponsoring today's video. So if you want to get yourself some cute K-pop merch, then be sure to check out their website. Links for that will also be in the description. Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!